Oh, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? Guys, I'm just getting ready for my workout. As you know, yesterday I didn't get a chance to do it. I had to cut my session short. So I'm gonna be doing my arms, abs, and core workout today, and I'm gonna take you with me. I like to start my arms, abs, and core day with a tricep exercise. And the reason for this is because the triceps make up the majority of the size of your upper arm. So you want to hit them hard and fast when you come in to the beginning of the workout when you have the most energy. I generally start off with a press type exercise, whether it's going to be a close grip bench or a close grip push up. And in this case, I opt for the close grip push up for a couple of reasons. One, it allows me to also use it as a moving plank uh, in order to challenge my core. So I suck in my stomach, create a vacuum, press that belly button up against my spine, and I hold it there while breathing in through my nose. And so while I'm pressing out the triceps, I'm also getting an excellent core exercise too. So remember, like I had spoken about in episode seven, it's about intent and intention. You wanna take on each exercise and each repetition with the thought of maximizing every rep, not with the thought of just finishing the set. If you think about just finishing the set, then you wouldn't do it as a core exercise too. You'd actually just be focused on squeezing out the triceps. So take Take that into consideration. Every time you do an exercise and you do a set and you do a rep, think about how can you make it even more beneficial for your entire body. I decided to superset the close grip push-ups with a hanging leg raise. And the reason why I do that is for a couple of things. One, I like to hit the lower abdominals first in a workout when you're hitting abs and core because it doesn't generally engage in every type of ab workout that you do. Uh, while your mid abs of the rectus abdominis and, and your, your upper abs have a tendency to engage in almost all movement, the lower abs don't. So I want to hit them while I have a lot of energy first in the workout and really get them pre-exhausted so by the time, or really get them exhausted so by the time I hit the mid and upper abs, uh, th those are already pre-exhausted and easy to just top off. Now when doing these hanging leg raises, uh, frankly I'm excited that I'm able to actually do them now and it's been a while since I've done these, almost a year. So I've had to work back up to this. But if you can see, I'm still using a little bit of rocking motion to be able to get that up there. And I'm using that rocking motion to kind of aid myself in being able to get the height that I want. Now, normally I would just come to a complete stop at the bottom, pause, remove momentum, and then come right back up. Stress on my core and my abs, and you have a deeper engagement. But frankly, my abs aren't strong enough to do that yet. So I'm just going through the motion, getting my body primed and used to doing this type of exercise again. And as it gets stronger, I'll be able to get more stricter with the form. Going on to the next superset, I started off with a bicep exercise and I used the Olympic bar with a straight bar curl. Now, I love the feel of this and even though a lot of people would prefer using an easy bar because it's easier on your wrist and takes on the natural shape of your grip, the Olympic bar just has a great way of just putting a really stressed feel along the forearm to bicep connection for me and I love that. Now, one of the things that I'm doing with this Olympic bar is that I'm also making it a chest movement as well too and really challenging the core and let's take a closer look I'm going to show you okay so here we're going to take a closer look at my repetitions if you notice that when I come to the bottom of each movement of the curl you'll notice that before I start again I roll my shoulders back I scoop underneath and then I begin with the curl and when I'm doing so I'm actually pulling back my pectoralis my chest muscles and I'm then using them to squeeze first before actually engaging my biceps and bringing them up and it has a couple of benefits one I feel it really pumping through my chest uh, at the beginning of the movement which then flows through into the bicep and it also helps me to then make it a deeper core exercise so remember whenever you're doing any type of barbell exercise curl in front of you you're engaging your core so that you don't fall forward I'm just making it a little bit more intense again with intention making each rep count and maximizing the benefit from it so then I superset those Olympic bar curls with jackknives. Now jackknives are awesome because they really hit that front abdominal area of the rectus abdominis, what we like to consider the six pack, or if you're genetically lucky, an eight pack or more. And it allows me to really be able to put a topper on that. Now I'm using a 25 pound plate and I'm trying to do very methodical movements. Again, trying to remove any type of momentum from the movement, taking the time to really engage the muscles 
muscles and squeeze them out at the top. And if you'll notice, very important, I'm keeping a slight bend in my knee. Uh, anytime you do any type of lower abdominal work, if you straighten out and you flex the knee and you straighten out the leg, then you start to engage more of your hip flexors and, and less of your lower abdominals. So you want to keep a slight bend in that knee and you want to really focus on making sure the lower abdominals are pulling your legs up while your upper abdominals are pulling your arms up with that weight and squeezing. So after that superset, we move on to the third superset of the exercises for today, and that's going to be a double arm blaster. So I'm going to do a triceps exercise along with a bicep exercise. Starting off with the tricep exercise, I'm going to be on the bench here, and I'm going to be doing skull crushers. Now, I prefer doing skull crushers after doing a press tricep movement first because a couple of reasons. One, the elbows are nice and warmed up and ready to go and, and less of a chance of irritating them as long as I'm staying within a, a reasonable weight amount that's really going to help me focus on flexing the tricep without putting any undue stress on those elbows. Now, when performing this, I like to make sure that I'm imagining my elbows have magnets on the inside of them and they're being drawn toward each other. So I don't let the elbows drift outwards. I keep them narrow, which keeps the emphasis on the tricep head. And when I go back, if you notice, I'm actually not holding the barbell directly above my chest when I'm going through the movement once I start the set. It's at a slight slant, so it forces my triceps to always be engaged. They never disengage, so it's constant pressure on my triceps. And when I do commit to the first bend of the movement, I then allow my elbows to go all the way back, which gives an extension into the long head of the tricep, which actually flows all the way through the armpit, all the way back toward the shoulder blade. And you want to be able to get that stretch there because when you start to pull those elbows back up above your face, you're engaging that long head of the tricep before you go and you fully extend the elbow out. Now, on this superset, arm blaster, I'm going to follow up the skull crushers with a Comerford curl. Now, I love these. You can do them in different ways, and some people like to do them while they're standing. I, however, think that you maximize the movement by externally rotating your arm at a 45 degree incline bench. So I like to go ahead and lay on it. Mine isn't as deep of an incline uh, because I still have to be careful about my shoulder, and frankly, I love how my shoulder feels with the connection through the bicep after doing these and being able to do these again without having intense pain in my right shoulder along that injury that I have is so enjoyable right now. Uh, I like to do these very methodical and I'm going to go three seconds down and I try to come up with one to two second pace but I'm more focused on making sure that the negative movement of the curl is really in control. Three seconds down, I don't want to go too quickly because it's very easy to injure yourself on this type of exercise uh, and I love this exercise and how it makes my biceps feel and what it does to the length of them, creating more room for size, and they just make your biceps so beautiful. Okay, so I decided to close off this exercise with a single core ab exercise. And now I'm going to work two angles on this. I'm going to work both sides of the obliques. Uh, and as you can see, I get down on one knee. I'm going to put a pad there for my knee to make sure that I don't injure it. I'm going to externally rotate my hip and bring the leg all the way out as far as I can. Then grabbing onto a cable with a very light weight, I'm only using about 13 pounds, just enough to really get the obliques to engage, I'm going to create a oblique type crunch. Now it's a very small movement as you can tell, but a very intense movement. And generally these type of exercises are very hard for beginners to really master and get a feel of. Because it's such a small movement and you're not using this massive elongation of the obliques, it does require you to get very intimate with the muscle and intimate with the feel. But by externally rotating the hip all the way out, uh, you allow a much deeper contraction into those obliques when you do the very precise and deep contraction as you squeeze down on that crunch. And it's an intense feel. And frankly, I'm only doing about 12 reps on each side for four sets and it's burning like crazy. And giving me the strength, I'm going to be building this up to be able to then do some more intense oblique moves down the road. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining in on today's 180 and 90. Um, I hope you appreciated the arms, abs, and core workout and the explanation as to why I did what I did. Ah, that's uh, Rock Hard Danny's twin brother, Death Danny. Day of the Dead, I think today. Tomorrow's the last day, right? Tonight. Tonight's the last day. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you like what you heard and you learned today, go ahead and hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. That always gets me pumped up to put on more content for you guys. And hit that notification bell so you'll know every single time we put up a new vlog. And I'm going to eat my berries, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.